The next pattern in the organizing data series is the opposite of the previous pattern. And this one is called change bidirectional association to unidirectional. And naturally it has the opposite motivation of the previous pattern where in this case we have this two-way association that we only need it to be one way at this point. One of these objects no longer needs to reference the other object. So we start where we left off last time. In this case we're looking at a one-to-many instead of the many-to-many. -many. And the order object still owns that association. It controls whether or not it's associated with the customer object. And now one of these two classes we decide through the evolution of the system that it doesn't need to reference the other class anymore. Well, if it's the customer object that no longer needs to reference the order, then that's pretty easy. We can just go back to where we were previously. And that was just getting rid of these and getting rid of these. And there shouldn't really be any consuming code to change because well, what we had determined in the system was that this relationship was no longer necessary. And now we're free to refactor internally in the order class as we see fit. We probably just replace this whole construct with an auto-implemented property. But what if the association needs to be broken the other way around? For example, the objects we're looking at, a customer and an order, what if the customer is the aggregate root and we always have a list of orders and we're, whenever we're looking at an order we're always in the context of a customer. We always get the order from a customer, we're always modifying or passing around a customer object which has this list of orders. And so it's the order object that no longer needs to see the customer. How do we change that? Because the order object owns this association. Well, there are lots of ways we can have the customer object own the association. And in fact, there are some later patterns for encapsulating collections. But for now, we're just going to make this public. And so now anyone who's modifying a customer can modify its orders because we can access that hash set directly, which means we no longer need this because we no longer need to control this association. So now we have a couple of options facing us and it depends on the code that's consuming these objects. If nothing that uses an order ever references a customer, then we can just get rid of that completely. However, what if the order object internally has some methods that use a customer? For example, what if we have a method to get a discounted price based on the customer? So let's give the order a price. And let's give a customer a discount. A discount might be a 5% discount or 10% discount. And so for any given order, we need to get the discounted price. Actually, you know what? Since this doesn't modify anything, Let's make this a property. And since it's a percentage discount, it would be price times one minus customer discount. So that would be the discounted price. But if we were to get rid of this customer object entirely, then we couldn't do that. We would have to pass in the customer object as a reference, which means first of all, we would have to refactor this into a method. Because we don't have the ability in C sharp to pass an argument to a property. If I remember correctly, I think Visual Basic does actually allow that, but C sharp doesn't. So we would have to refactor this a bit. So any code which consumes this would have to pass in a customer. Now we already established that the whole reason we're doing this refactoring is because whenever you're looking at an order, you're in the context of a customer looking at its list of orders. So this customer should be readily available to pass into this method. Another option that we might want to look at 
And this one, I've never actually seen it used, but it's possible. Let's back this out. What if we still need this getter? We don't have the setter anywhere because nothing should be maintaining this relationship through the order object, but we still need this getter. Once in a while, maybe there's some code somewhere out there that, in the context of an order, needs to reference the customer. Well, first of all, we're not maintaining this association anymore, and so we don't have this customer object to pass back. So we'd have to get that customer somehow. Now, the reason I've never seen this done before is because the solution doesn't seem very performant at first. And that would be that, say we have this repository or factory somewhere where we can get all the customers in the system. So let's just make a static factory here. Call them all customers. In fact, we'll call it get all customers and we'll make it a, a method. And for now, just to get this to compile, we're just going to return a list of customers. But for whatever reason, in, oh, I'm sorry, whatever reason, in, in whatever manner, somehow this method returns all the customers in the system. Maybe it hits the database or some in-memory object. Then this getter would have to rely on that. This would say, for each customer, if customer.orders.contains this, return that customer. Otherwise you might throw an exception or return null. Let's throw an exception. I know we can come up with a better error message. We can come up with a custom exception because the default exception is rarely a good idea. We might want to put a custom exception there somewhere. Now, of course, this wouldn't be very performant if we had to go to a database and get all the customers. Now, maybe these factory methods have some way of finding a customer based on the order. Maybe there's some business logic behind that. So we might have something like, well, let's keep this factory method, but we might have another factory where maybe we have some search parameters for a customer. It returns a single customer or you know, even an innumerable of customers in this case. Might only contain one, might contain none. We'll call it find customers. And in here we might have some search criteria, which may include an order. Well, for now we don't need to build an entire class of search criteria, so we'll just pass in the order directly for now. So this finds customers by order. Now again, just to get it to compile, we'll do this. And now, we can find customers by this. And now we don't need this if anymore. In fact, well, you know what, just to make this make sense, let's create a search criteria. And right now, the only criteria it has is an order. And now, well, we know that it should only return one. Now, from this search criteria, it could return many. But for a given order, it should only return one, because an order should only exist in one customer in this case because we started with a one-to-many relationship instead of many-to-many. -many. So here I might say new customer search criteria and now we don't need customer anymore, we don't need the, the loop anymore
So we might say that, so we might put in some error checking here that if count is less than one, we might throw an exception. Might throw in some more defensive programming here if customers.count is greater than one. Throw another exception. This one would probably we also want to make a custom exception here so we can discern between these two. We'd probably also want to throw in some additional debugging information here. We'd want to include the the order ID on the message somehow, either directly in the message here or if it's a custom exception, put it on a custom property on that exception. There's a lot we could do here that's not really related to this pattern itself. And then finally, return the actual customer that was found. We're really getting way outside the pattern here, just looking at our options. Like I said at the beginning, this is this isn't really a, a pattern that has a specific set of steps to accomplish it. It has a number of options, and those options are going to unravel into other considerations throughout the system. But essentially, what we're doing is changing this association so that only one of the two objects owns that association. In this case, it is now the customer object that owns that association. We might want to wrap this around, make this observable in some way to respond to it, but for now we're just having it be directly editable. And that's pretty much it for the change bidirectional association to unidirectional pattern. Thanks for watching.